Conversations.com. Elite Conversations.com. Elite Conversations.com. Hello, everyone. This is Daryl Spears with EliteConversations.com. Welcome to another episode of Elite Conversations Unplugged. I want to thank you guys for, again, supporting us for another night. Uh, we come to you every Thursday to bring you quality information. Our purpose, uh, one of our jobs as EliteConversations.com is to give you knowledge. We also want to provide you resources and the connections you need to take your business to the, to the next level. So again, we are bringing a powerful speaker, uh, someone that can bring us a wealth of knowledge in the area of finance, and she has uh, done a lot in uh, the banking industry, so definitely pull out your pad, your pencils, your paper, and we're really going to talk about how to build a strong financial structure for your business. Uh, before I get started, I do want to thank uh, my guest from last week. I uh, definitely want to thank uh, Patrick Pete, who is the gift coach, who is also having a conference for um, those that aspire to be in business and for those that are just looking to understand how we um, know our gifts and how we can use our gifts to take our lives and our business to the next level. Also want to thank um, Miss Tamisha Seiler McNeil. She is the founder of Moms Rocks and the CEO of um, TSM Consulting Services. And both of those individuals were outstanding last week and really sharing a lot about uh, your gift and understanding your passion and just what to do when you're, you're not sure how to move forward in your life and not sure how to um, tap into that gift in terms of your business. So check out our uh, podcast. You can go to our YouTube page, which is still fairly new, but all of our recordings are on our YouTube page and you will get a wealth of knowledge, not just from last week, but from all of our um, experts that have been on the show. We have been blessed to have some quality experts on our show. So again, thank you for joining us today. And I just want to thank Shanaria Ashley. She is the vice president of BB&T Community Community Business Development Officer, and she is doing some outstanding things in the community. She has received her BS in finance from Strayer College, magna cum laude. Yes. Did y'all hear me say magna <laughs> cum laude? Uh, she has also earned her AA in accounting at the UMUC Europe. You went to Europe to get your AA? Go Why ahead. Not? <laughs> hey, I like that. Uh, Shanaria has been with bb t Bank for 11 years. And served as a member of the BB&T Greater Washington Region Senior Leadership Team. In her previous role, she managed a team that offered financial wellness, solutions to business, and nonprofit organizations in the Greater Washington area. She also received, I'm sorry, she also served as BB&T Greater Washington Region Lighthouse Project Coordinator, a program that focuses on community involvement and volunteer services for business, nonprofits, and communities tied to the BB&T family. And that's real key for us, and that's what we want to talk a little bit about today, is uh, the community, not only just business, but how we can work together as a community um, in growing, especially here in Prince George's County, which we really have a passion to really help businesses move to the next level mm -hmm. so that they can get to a place where they can support other areas of our community, such as schools and, mm -hmm. you know, nonprofits can come together. And it really takes everybody working together for the community to, to go to the next level. And there are a lot of things that are getting ready to happen in Prince George's County, and I'm excited about 
what's going on with the business community, and I'm very excited that you guys have a passion of being a part of that community. So real quick, just share a little bit about your background and BB&T and just what you guys are doing right now in the uh, to support the business community in Prince George's County. Sure. And well, other areas. I'm absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Daryl, for having me on the show this evening. Um, I always like to partner with organizations that are supporting our business clients. So Excellent. this Excellent. is one of the many resources that are available to our community. So thank you for having us on the show today. You're um, welcome. So my name is Shanaria Ashley, and I'm a business community business development officer. So a lot of times you may be familiar with like branch manager mm -hmm. or market leader or teller, but what I love most about BB&T is that we've been around since 1872 and wow. a long time, a long, a long, long time. Long time. <laughs> yeah. And our name has stayed the same. And one of the things that keeps us going is how we interact with our communities. You know, every time we are in front of a client or we're talking to an organization, we make sure they have the perfect client experience. Mm -hmm. So we're responsive, we're reliable, we're empathetic. I mean, we have one of the top training programs. So when you ask me what we're doing with our communities, we sit and we make sure that we have programs and stuff in place to help them be better places to work, to Excellent. live, to grow. And my position specifically is to help our business owners. Mm -hmm. So I provide like educational seminars and resources for them to understand the credit requirements, okay. um, to understand what type of insurance they may need to keep their business protected. We talk about cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, we just make sure that they bank better. That's the goal, and especially what I do day to day with the Prince George's County business owners. That's excellent, mm -hmm. and uh, having the privilege to sit into in one of your workshops oh, yeah. and to really hear what you guys are doing and the information that I learned, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a no brainer bringing you on to um, the show to share with those that are out there. I mean, just a little bit you shared with me, um, and one of the things that you talked about in that workshop is the importance of uh, uh, diversifying your. Uh, banking, mm -hmm. you know, your mm -hmm. your accounts and all that good stuff. And I'm like, hold up, I got a banker here <laughs> telling me I need to diversify and put money in another bank. Now, I know I've, that's <laughs> awesome that you're really more you're concerned about the business owner, like you're saying, mm -hmm. and really giving that information to say, hey, this is what you should be doing to um, make sure you cover your bases financially. So share a little bit about that. Um, and a little bit about what you do in your workshops. Okay, so we try to help our clients in five key areas. So okay. it's business deposits, um, employee benefits, credit, mm -hmm. um, insurance. Uh, bb and is the fifth largest insurance brokerage. So wow. our insurance business is actually larger than our banking business. A lot of, yeah, a lot of people don't know, but we do insurance and we do insurance very well. Okay. Um, so insurance and then personal banking. So in talking to my business clients, a lot of times I'll meet owners and they say, well, well, I've been at this bank for 20 years and my, my mother banked there, my father banked there. And that's great because you should have a relationship with your bank. But if you're only focusing on one institution, you're limiting yourself from other resources that could be available. So um, one of the things you heard me say in my workshop is I believe, and this is a shenariaism, so mm -hmm. I won't brand it with anything else, <laughs> but um, you need to have one source that is like your consultative bank. This is the bank that you sat down with them, they reviewed your mission statement. Um, every six months when you clean your teeth, you should go mm -hmm. in and review mm -hmm. your business plan. Wow. Um, you should also check your credit. You know, that's how I try to get people in thinking about when they need to re-review those things. But your consultative bank has to be your strategy bank. That's just me, okay. They have to have all the products and services to help you grow. They have to be your go-to. I mean, right. they're almost an employee mm -hmm. of the company. Um, and then you need a bank that's a savings bank. Um, a lot of times, as business owners especially, I work with individuals in the dream phase all the way up into maybe $2.5 in assets and revenues. Wow. And of course, BB&T can go beyond that. But just for my segment, I see a lot of times they're just going. Mm. So money's coming in, money's going out, but are we saving? Are we right. putting money away? Exactly. And the quickest way to do that is to put money where you can't touch it. <laughs> so, you know, Let me write that down. yeah, put money where you <laughs> can't touch good. it. Um, I do a lot of um, workshops for the community to talk about like credit and mm -hmm. keeping healthy credit. And I'll tell people, I believe in freezing the credit cards. I believe in, you know, opening up a bank account. Mm -hmm. Do not order a debit card, you know, so you don't have access to that money. Absolutely. But put money there. 
year. You mm-hmm. know, I'm sure you're keeping track of the profit that's coming into the business. Go ahead and curve a little bit of that off. Put it in a bank that you can't touch, and that's your number two bank. Um, the last one, and they don't have to necessarily be different banks. You can set up multiple accounts. Um, it should be your payables. So the account that you're paying, maybe your payroll, mm-hmm. your insurance, anything that's going out, that should be separated from your main operating account because the fraudsters, that's what we call the people that, mm-hmm. you know, um, try to kind of compromise the security of your account, they're getting better and better. Wow. And if they compromise your account, as a courtesy to you, we're going to shut mm-hmm. everything Thank down. You. So if we shut everything down, you're stopping operations, you may have payroll and payments. But if you can set up your accounts where you have that main account, Mm -hmm. you have a payables account, and you have a savings account, I call that the three-legged stool to success. And that's kind of the foundation that I try to encourage my business owners to create as they're developing their business. Yeah, I took that to heart. I tell you, (laughs) that's that's why I brought it up. That's one of the Mm -hmm. things I remember you talking about, and it's just eye-opening for me that that's important Mm -hmm. as a business owner. You just mentioned something, and I want you to share, because there especially in my target market, there are a lot of business owners that are just starting or um, individuals that are ready to start the business. And you said that you helped them from the dream stage. Yeah. Talk about the dream stage and how can they come to you even before they even launch in the business and what services or help can you provide in that, that dream stage? Sure. So um, within the greater Washington region, we have a small business department. And mm-hmm. within the small business department, we have small, small business specialists mm-hmm. that work on underwriting the loans. Um, and then you have an individual like me that talks strategy. Okay. So when you are in that position and you're like, you know what, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. I'm ready mm-hmm. to branch off. I want to turn my passion yeah. into profit. Then you call Shenaria and we sit down and have a cash flow conversation. And I mentioned those different areas, but I want to know first, What's your passion? Mm -hmm. Because it's pointless to create a business or something that you're not passionate about. And that's really cliche, Mm Daryl. But honestly, this is going to, it's important Mm -hmm. because a business is almost like another child, almost. (laughs) (laughs) It's your baby. And Mm -hmm. most of the times, the first two or three years, you're running it. You're you're the secretary, the janitor, Mm -hmm. the marketing, the person. So a lot of what I do is pull out that passion. Like, what are you really passionate about? And I encourage people, if you're at that stage and you're like, you know what, I want to start a business. I don't know what I want to do. Pull out a blank sheet of paper and do just a a dump. Mm. Write down all the things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, Look around your community. See what your community needs Needs, because those things need to match. If you really love making bagels, but there's a bagel shop on every corner, (laughs) that may not be the business you want to you want to have absolutely but maybe you can go into marketing for pastry companies and different things because that's the need for your community Mm -hmm. so it takes a couple of steps so the first would be finding what your passion is and then seeing what your community needs because you have to match the supply and demand Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's important Mm -hmm. and um what you're mentioning is critical because you have those peaks and valleys so Mm -hmm. the passion is what gets you through the valley when you're down there and it's just like okay Mm -hmm. things are not looking well but you push through it Mm-hmm. And it's good, too, to say, hey, because a lot of that is tied to finances when we're in those valleys. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. these receivables do and all this good stuff. So it's good to have someone that you feel like is in your corner. Mm-hmm. Um, you even made another good comment. You know, you guys try to look at it as we're you're one of our employees so we can feel conf- confident that if we go in oh, there yeah. that you have our best interests at heart. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's great. I, mm-hmm. I really love it. Daryl, I mm-hmm. take complete ownership. Like mm-hmm. when I meet with some of the business owners, I, I look at them, I'm like, you know we're in business together, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they kind of <laughs> right. chuckle, but mm-hmm. we celebrate the highs. Um, during the lows, we don't complain. We figure out strategies and solutions to make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, the toughest years of business development is that first one to two years. It's, it it's always the toughest, but if you make it to year three, that's where you want to be, mm-hmm. which is why it's very important that the bank that you choose to earn your business business, their mission and values have to match what you have. Yeah, absolutely. Because that way mm-hmm. you're speaking the same language. Mm-hmm. And that makes it very easy to get through those valleys and get back out to the mountain peak. Yes, that's mm-hmm. excellent. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now B B and T started in the South, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fam's in the South. And I'm used to seeing it there. How long have they been 
in the northern area, in particular Prince George's County, and how many branches do you all have in this in the DMV? Okay, so we started. We really came to maybe like the Virginia market in 1995 okay. through some mergers and acquisitions. Oh wow! Okay. Um, but this morning, I, I kind of knew you were going to ask mm-hmm. that question, and I, <laughs> I did some research, and I was surprised to see that actually in 1998 we acquired Federal Bank Corp of Hyattsville, Maryland, oh, wow. and Franklin Bank Corporation of DC, and that was really the first entry to the DMV. DMV area. area. Okay. Um, so 1998 is not a long time, but in 1872 to 1998 just shows growth in our shareholders and our leaders' investment in making sure that bb t was able to expand across mm-hmm. the footprint. Um, in Prince George's County, we have about 14 branches um, locally, but bank-wide, we have about 2,100 financial centers. So wow. we are looking forward to continue to spread our footprint, spread our message, and provide our clients with the best service possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I have to chuckle a little bit when you say <laughs> you guys came in and got into the market through purchasing other banks. Uh-huh. Um, just you know, as we educate business owners and uh, educate my clients, again, we should be put, putting ourselves in a position to be acquired. The only reason mm-hmm. you acquired those banks is because they were stable enough and they had – what you need it to go to the next level. And there are major, major corporations out there that are looking for small businesses that can bring them some value. And so do you guys do anything to help business owners with strategy and putting them in places where they bring some value to their business to, you know, major corporations or attractive to investors or anything like that? Do you? So we were talking about this earlier, but Mm -hmm. Prince George's County has just done an amazing job Mm -hmm. with the technical assistance that they provide to businesses. I mean, we have a procurement technical assistance office that's located in College Park, Maryland. Um, There's some other organizations, but there are places out there that will sit down and talk with you Mm -hmm. about, I guess they call it matchmaking and partnering with other companies so that you can win bigger contracts, um, so that you're in a better position financially to leverage each other's credits or bonding needs so that you can win bigger contracts. From a banking standpoint, we make sure the cash flow is healthy. Um, If Mm -hmm. the cash flow is healthy, if they can leverage their credit correctly, then Mm -hmm. they're in a position to kind of merge or maybe acquire to go to that next step. So we have partners that we work with that help with that. Excellent. And and again, uh, you bring more questions to me as we talk. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it is good. It is good. So how should business owners balance their cash flow and their credit? Because it's, it's, it's a strategy to that, right? Because you don't want to, I mean, liquid capital is king, you know, yeah. but cash you have to have cash is king and you have to have your, your credit so that you can do some things you can't afford, but you might need equipment or whatever. Um. How should they balance that? I mean, how should they think through that? How much should they invest? Because, again, you want them to put something to to the side for savings. But I don't think we think about that as business Mm -mm. owners. It's like open up a a checking account, Mm -hmm. open up a savings account, get a credit card, and go. Yeah. So is is there a strategy for that? There is. And I'll tell you, you know, um, I'm excited because, especially in the county, business owners are starting to look at credit differently. Um, There was a time when I would meet individuals and they would say, Shanari, I'm doing really well. I have cash in the account. Whenever I need anything, I just purchase it. And I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, yeah, but you know what? We're in a debt-driven society, Mm. and the people that are ahead of you are leveraging credit correctly. Um, They're utilizing lines of credit. Even though they have the cash in the bank, they're using equipment loans Mm. because when that next project is ready to go, they need to be ready to go. You know, So Mm -hmm. the best time to get a line of credit is when you don't need it. Wow. That Let me say that one more time. The best time to get a line of credit is when you don't need it. Because what will happen is, you know, let's say that you decide you want to go into business, Mm -hmm. um, you bid and you win a contract, and now you have to hire 50 people. You've just exhausted your savings for the past two, three years to support this first payroll, and you have nothing Nothing. left to support the materials, the supplies, the different things that you need. So what I tell my business owners is that, okay, I know you don't need it, but let's look at your full financial picture 
and let's see what solutions make sense. And now, if you don't need it and it doesn't make sense, then okay. But if you can leverage credit correctly with, um, I don't know, even like a, a, a credit card to mm-hmm. take care of um, expenses and um, mileage. And if it makes sense, use it. If it doesn't, then let's figure out different ways we can help you increase your savings, utilize cash in your checking accounts, different things like that. But credit's not a bad word. Um, right. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay to mm-hmm. use it. And there's some safe and there's some things that you can put in place so that way you keep your cash in the bank cash is king mm-hmm. it's always great to have that but then you do have access to other resources to support, support payroll to support equipment purchases and different things like that and what i really love about bbnt is that we sit down with our business owners and complete a personal financial statement okay now this personal financial statement will go through what they have in their accounts mm-hmm. um, do they have life insurance what do they have that's already out there from a lending perspective and we're going to make the best decision for the client and sometimes the best decision is that you know what mr client right now let's work on this area of the business we're not ready to go to plan b you know so Mm -hmm. it's really a consultative approach Um, but i do encourage people to go talk to your banks you know pull out your business plan dust it Mm -hmm. off blow it off um, look at where you were where you started make some tweaks to it and then have your banker match any product solutions updates that have come out that you haven't added into your plan because the bank is constantly evolving i mean there's always new ways that you can support your business and if you did that plan 10 years ago it's not going to make sense to the products and the solutions that are available today okay Mm -hmm. and is that a a critical piece i mean it's it should be a critical piece but i'm gonna ask you in terms of the business plan coming in what do you do if they don't have a business plan what do you how do you educate them (laughs) (laughs) well we're on air but (laughs) (laughs) usually you know um if i am approached by a client which happens often because i I do Mm -hmm. meet them in a dream stage uh, we help develop it together um there's also some online resources like Mm -hmm. score Mm -hmm. um score score is a great Mm -hmm. one um and there's there's i mean there's so many tools and stuff out there where you need a plan like we need to know what the mission is because at the end of the day, we have to make sure that every decision that we're making within your company and business supports that mission. Otherwise, it's just going to spiral out of control. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have a plan, I encourage them to have a plan. I work with them to get to that plan. And it's not just what you want to do. You have to do market research. Do you have any competitors? Um, How does the market respond to the service that you're trying to provide? Um, Has there been any success? Are there any regulations that's going to affect how you grow your business? I mean, all those things are important, even down to where you want to place your office location. So I think the conversations that we have with our clients at BBNT encourage the business plan process because they see how it complements every stage of the business, things that they need to know today or maybe mm-hmm. things that they need a little later. Earlier, you asked about maybe um, acquiring new businesses or selling businesses. Mm-hmm. We're having different conversations today. Um, sometimes business owners um, think that, you know, OK, my business is going to be my retirement plan. We encourage them to wow. look at traditional retirement plans instead of saying the business would be it because you can sell it mm-hmm. and then you can make money that way I mean mm-hmm. there's just so many different things that you can do with the business once you create it and it's established and it's successful so that plan is going to help with that because if you add in okay maybe in 10 years I want to sell it and this is what I want to do we need to make the appropriate steps so that can actually happen that's awesome mm-hmm. and you're right make the appropriate steps yes. you know because you mm-hmm. want that to happen mm-hmm. um, of course I'm sure uh, listeners or viewers out there Want to talk a little bit about lending and okay. loans? That's always a, 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 a hot spot. Mm-hmm. Um, help business owners understand what do you have to do to be prepared for a loan. You can't. I mean, when you come in, you're ready for money. You know, you should be thinking about thinking about that ahead of time. You know, and, and like you just said, the best time to do it is when you have cash in the bank or mm-hmm. whenever. So, other than that, in terms of having paperwork in place, in terms of your credit. What's a great position for a business owner to be in to get a loan? And do you have um, special loans for minorities or um, uh, military veterans as well um, to support them? Good question. So it's always a great time to talk to a banker about a loan. 
you are always in a good position to ask a banker okay. about their lending okay. services and requirements, even before you need it. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes back to relationship banking um, and especially what we do at BB&T. Um, when you sit down with your banker, they will be the ones to be able to tell you, you know, Mr. Client, if this is what you're looking for, these are the documents that we will need at this time. Um, these are some of the things that we look for. This is how this could potentially help you. Mm -hmm. And that conversation kind of prepares you. So I say when the thought pops in your head, sit down, talk to your banker, ask what their requirements are. Most institutions will have a checklist. Mm -hmm. That checklist will require something like a personal financial statement that I spoke to you about. Um, they're always going to look for some business financials. And I'll tell you, Daryl, mm -hmm. the professionalism of your documents matter. Wow. Okay. Um, they matter. I mean, they, they matter so much because it tells us that you've put that much effort into making sure you've painted a really good picture of your 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 bank and your financial picture. So That's those things point. are important. And not just having them, being able to understand and then communicate them. Mm -hmm. um, and we hear this horror story <laughs> often with athletes. They're like, I didn't know I was losing millions oh, of dollars, yes. you yeah, know, because they're not aware of what's going wow. on. That's but true. if I can sit with a business owner and they're saying, well, my profit it went up 16% or I lost because of this or I purchased equipment and this is depreciation. We're talking bankless now. Mm -hmm. I know that you understand and I know even more that if you're given an X amount of money, you're going to manage it just like you exactly. manage your finances. So I would say have a conversation at first thought. Ask them what their requirements are. You should be able to walk away with a checklist. Um, the checklist may vary, but you can probably go to any site that supports small business mm -hmm. development. And it's some of the, the main things, a balance sheet, an income statement, personal financial statement, profit and loss statement, all of those things paint a picture. Mm -hmm. And once we have that picture, then we're able to kind of move forward with the next steps. Banks are lending. Banks okay, are lending. lending. You guys BB &T hear that, right? <laughs> is lending. And part of what my role is, is educating the business owner on the lending requirements and what that looks like. Um, this year, um, with bb &T, we kind of changed the way we're doing access to capital sessions. You know, um, last year I went to a lot of different sessions, and mm -hmm. they were good, but my business owners were so frustrated. They were like, Shenario, we're going to the same seminar, and they're saying the same, same. thing <laughs> about, you know, the five of credit mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, this and this, mm -hmm. I really need somebody to explain to me what's going on once I walk away from the application. Wow. So we've kind of tweaked our access to capital session. And um, I've done a session with the DC Chamber and oh, some excellent. other organizations where we say, okay, this is the checklist. This is what we look at on the 1040. This is what we look at on the Schedule C. This is what we look at on a profit and loss. Here's some ratio so that they walk away feeling better about mm -hmm. the application and they understand if it is approved, okay, this is this is why or if it isn't this is what I have to work on and that's important for me for them to understand the education behind it yeah and if mm -hmm. anyone is to turn down or anything like that have the conversation with the banker um, and most of the time you'll be able to understand okay this is what I need to work on Absolutely. or maybe I need to sit down with my accountant or CPA and get some more information around these areas yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that, that the information helps you get over the fear you yes. know a lot of people are yes. fearful of coming in and talking about it you know mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about the situation but every everybody has a different situation and yeah. you don't know how good or bad things are until you ask and like i say even if you get turned down mm -hmm. now you have the information and that's key of go. where to take your business to the, for the next step and that's why i, I agree with you is mm -hmm. anytime is good to is go good. and talk about mm -hmm. it you know but it's good to go in at a point where, like you said, you don't need the loan, mm -hmm. but you're getting information. That's time, knowledge. Darryl. That's, that's I, time. I see that now. No pressure. <laughs> no you're pressure. In, you're open to information. You know, that that's a really good place to be in. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's some great information. I want to flip the script just a little bit because I'm always, we're always looking to really try to educate um, individuals that are aspiring to be, you know, uh, bankers, or aspiring to be business owners. And just want to sh you to share a little bit about yourself, and mm -hmm. I mean you're doing some great and powerful things in the in the big corporation. And what would you tell your 16 year old daughter of <laughs> of what she should be doing to you know prepare for a career or prepare for entrepreneur? 
Um, I just want you to share some of your inspirations and how you've gotten to where you are today. Sure. We're all, we're all friends, and you won't tell anybody, oh, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, that's different because I think that everyone is motivated by different things. But mm-hmm. if you're asking for Shenaria's story, um, I started BB&T as a teller. Wow. Um, after awesome. a family reorganization. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And um, when I worked for this organization, um, I only worked there because at the time um, I needed to open a bank and account bank account with Mm BB&T and my family member was like well if you want me to transfer money you need to open a BB&T account I was like what is BB&T you know so I went and found this bank opened an account at the time I think I just put like 10 bucks in it or so and during that transition um you know I I went to make some purchases and I got a phone call and the phone call was a a lady she had a a North Carolina accent and she was like um Shenaria I'm just calling because we noticed some purchases on your new account Mm. I want to make sure it's you Mm. I was like like, wow, I never knew that 11 years later I would be sitting here Sydney. proud to work for this amazing company. Wow. So for me, BB&T is my bank of choice and mm-hmm. my employer of choice because of how they treat their communities, the employees, um, our shareholders. Wow. Um, it, it's just the, a really good place to work. So even before saying I want to go into the banking profession, I encourage that 16-year-old or whoever's looking to get into that profession, learn about that organization. Learn about, um, you know, how they were founded, mm-hmm. um, what are their mission, what, what's their um, their purpose statement. And if it moves you, mm-hmm. then that's where the direction you want to go. Um, another thing was um, once I got into the organization, I mean, there were so many mentors that were there. And I would say as you are climbing the ladder, mm-hmm. look for a mentor, someone right. that you can Absolutely. talk to, um, preferably not someone you report to, mm-hmm. right. um, mm-hmm. but that you can just kind of just ask those quote unquote dumb questions mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. get through it. Then you need an advocate, mm-hmm. you know, somebody that is going to vouch for you when you're not in the room. Absolutely. And I've been very blessed at right. BB&T to have individuals that would speak for me and advocate for me when I'm not even in the room. Mm-hmm. And those two things are important. And you're going to want those inside the organization and outside of the organization. Um, and in doing those two things, that will be a good direction to go as you're looking for that career. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say get as much training as possible. Right. Um, BB&T is a great training organization um, for their associates. I went through like a leadership training program um, for our associates. Um, BB&T has a banking school through Wake Forest University. Oh, wow. Completed that. Um, but I would also look for an organization where you can grow and develop yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, those are some of the things I look for personally. And, and for that 16-year-old, I would say start with the mission. Once you find a mission that matches, then see how you can develop that passion. And then that's the place that you want to have your career. That's awesome. That is some outstanding advice. And yeah. I really appreciate that because I know those that listen to this or listen to the re- replay, you know, mm-hmm. that's really the value we want to leave with. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to leave people feeling um that they have some hope and, mm-hmm. and seeing, and it's good for young people to see, you know, what they can be as opposed to just learning it as well. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So as we close, share a little bit about um, what um, BBT is doing in the community in the coming weeks, some of the events that you guys do um, occasionally, and um, share your information if people want you to come out and do a workshop for them, their corporation or whatever, because I know, like I said, I've heard you guys, and you do a great job in educating uh, the business community. So um, how should individuals reach out to you? Okay, um, so to reach um, me, um, I'm located in College Park, Maryland, but I service the greater Washington region. Okay, good. Um, so I tell individuals that my office is really my vehicle. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, okay. My name is spelled S C H. N-E-A-R-I-A, Shenaria, and the last name is Ashley, Mm A-S-H-L-E-Y. And I'm sure they'll post my email and Mm -hmm. stuff information on the site. But I'm open to calls and conversations about business development, so you can contact me anytime. Um, My phone number is 301-313. Two three zero seven. Some of the events that are going on, I'm really excited because we're like in our most charitable season um, throughout the whole year. We have something going on right now called our Lighthouse Project, wow. where we support all sorts of organizations mm-hmm. throughout the BBT footprint. And our CEO Kelly King is so gracious. I mean, since 2009, he has given every region just um, some resources to go out and make our communities better places to be, which wow. is part of our mission. So we roll our sleeves up and we 
go and do beautification projects. Nice. Um, I know personally I've gone to domestic violence shelters in mm-hmm. Prince George's County and helped their call centers, like, put up desks mm-hmm. and paint the walls. Mm-hmm. So it looks more like a home oh, field thing. Right. Yeah, so we're currently doing that right now. Next week I'll be building a house now. <laughs> I, I, they come behind me and make sure <laughs> it's okay. It. Yeah. But last year I did some flooring, and I have a better appreciation okay. for contractors. So shout out for the flooring contractors out there. But we're in our lighthouse season. Um, we're also getting ready to start supporting one of um, one of the two charities that we support in Greater Washington, and it's Junior Achievement. Oh yes. So are yes. you familiar with yes, Junior Achievement? Bit, Love Junior, Junior Achievement. Achievement. Yes. Have you been to the finance park out in? Um, no, I haven't. So they have this beautiful finance park facility right near the Redskins complex. I where didn't know that. it's like a little community and there's like a, a grocery store, a retailer, a bank, and elementary school kids, like maybe seventy thousand a year, go in and they're presented with these scenarios mm-hmm. and they have to just survive as an adult for a day. Wow. So as bankers, we volunteer not only on site, but we go into the classroom and teach them about budgeting mm-hmm. and savings and That's different awesome. things. Yeah. That's awesome. But then when they come to this park, they get scenarios. So I know um, when I volunteered last year and I know we're closing that assume mm-hmm. but I um I had a group of um, young girls and one of the scenarios the girl got well, she was a divorced father with two children and she was making thirty thousand dollars a year and she wow. had to just make it work and she was like well my dad told me I just need to be a server so I don't pay taxes and when they train you to interact with the kids you're not supposed to give direction Direction. you have to let them figure it out Mm -hmm. but at the end of that session she said you know what i'm going to go to college Mm -hmm. i'm going to get a degree i'm going to get a job i'm going to save so one day in that facility changed one household and they see seventy thousand a year wow so right now in a bbnt branch you can walk in and we welcome you to support that cause Mm -hmm. um the money goes to that organization Um, we even do a -a bowlathon where we get yes, out there and I've, bowl I've yeah and bowl i'm not a great time. bowler but i like to go and just cheer from the sidelines so junior achievement is something that we have that's going on right now for small business we'll be doing an mbe workshop next tuesday on april 25th where we'll be supporting small business owners helping them go through the procurement process with prince george's county public schools um it's partnered with prince george's county building services um maryland mdot will be there mm-hmm. we'll have alternative financing representative and bb will be there but this is another thing that we do to provide outreach and resources for our small business community and if anyone wants to contact me for more information I can provide that that is awesome uh, you got you have provided a wealth of information thank I want to thank you so much for participating mm-hmm. and allowing elite conversations to uh, bring you in mm-hmm. I know you had to get approval <laughs> <laughs> So I appreciate BB&T for allowing you to come on and share, and I'm thankful because you guys are doing an excellent job, and I really love the the, um, community component of it. And I I just thank you for being an example of what we can do in corporate America. Everybody, you know, might not want to be in business or whatever, but you can still do some fantastic things to support your community, to support um, businesses in the community. So thank you so much for for what you're doing. I want to thank again everyone for being a part of Elite Conversations. Thank you for uh, joining in on another episode of Elite Conversations Unplugged. Again, you can always find us on EliteConversations.com. You can find a replay of this show on YouTube. And we hope you join us again next week. You guys always give us great support. Again, my name is Daryl Spears. I'm with EliteConversations.com. And as I always say, every day is a good day if you do it God's way. And he is always the smartest one in the room. Thank you, and you have a great evening. Bye-bye.